Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, I would like to solve a problem. Um, it's about statistical distribution and I'm going to solve the problem within the framework of the task A as I formulated it and I will go into the details. Um, by the way, this lecture is presented on unizor.com and that's where I suggest you to uh, watch it from because there are detailed uh, notes for every lecture. Uh, plus, there is some functionality like you can enroll into the course, you can take exams, etc. if you're registered. So, this is the better place to watch this lecture, although it is on YouTube, obviously. All right, so, um, first let me just briefly mention what, what I mean, task A, when we're talking about statistical distribution. Well, let's consider you have a random variable which takes values of x1, x2, etc., xk with unknown probabilities. And your task is knowing the theoretically possible values the random variable can take and knowing certain statistics about what exactly happened with, with the random variable c. For instance, it took the value x1 certain number of times, x2 certain number of times, and xa certain number of times. We made n experiments, and based on these numbers, I would like to make an estimate what are these probabilities. And what's very important is the margin of errors. Now, obviously, the best estimate of these probabilities are empirical frequencies, right? So that's the best we can do for P1, and that's the best we can do for P2, etc. So that's obvious. Now, the next thing is to evaluate the margin of errors and where exactly our real probabilities are relative to empirical frequencies. And I'm going to solve this problem based on a concrete problem which I'm going to specify right now. So here is the problem. Let's consider that in some country we have elections. Um, now we have three different parties which are offering their candidates for top position. We have the white party, we have the blue party, and we have the red party. So each one has candidates, right? These are candidates. And then people basically vote each one, um, uh, each person in the country vote for somebody who uh, this particular person prefers to see at the top. Now, we have three positions. We have the president, we have the vice president, and we have minister of defense, or defense minister, okay? So, these three people will take these three positions based on whoever gets most uh, votes will be the president, the next one will be the vice president, and the third out of these three will take the defense minister's por por portfolio. Now, our task, statistical task, before the, uh, the real uh, election start, started, uh, is to evaluate the chances of each of the parties, right? So, our purpose is to make certain predictions for elections based on certain statistical results. So, here are statistical results. There was a survey of 4,000 people. Out of these 4,000 people, 1480 
said that they prefer the pre uh, th they prefer um, the White Party candidate. Thirteen twenty prefer the Blue Party pre uh, uh, representative, and twelve hundred uh, suggested that they would prefer the representative of the Red Party. Now, the first problem: what are the chances or what are the probabilities? Uh, for each of those guys to uh, to have the top position, it's obvious. It's 1480 divided by 400 for the white party, which is 0 0.37. So that's the probability of the white party candidate to become the president. Now, for the blue party, we have obviously 1320 divided by 4000, which is 0 0.33. And for the red party, the probability of the red party candidate to become the president is 0 0.30. So that's easy. Now, the question is, what are the margin of er margins of errors in these cases? Okay, here is how we can calculate that. I can actually refer to the previous lecture um, for the formula, but I would like to, 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 to remind you what's the, um, what's the derivation of, of these formulas, etc. So, um, here is how we will approach it. Let's introduce a new variable, random variable, beta, which is equal to 1 or 0. And I'm talking right now only about the white party candidate. So I would like to evaluate the margin of error of this particular uh, probability, 0 0.37. So um, I'm introducing new variable beta, which for each out of 4,000 person um, would represent one if, uh, if this person votes for W and zero if it's uh, not W. So, if the person, the voter, uh, votes for representative of the white party candidate to be his favorite, then the beta is equal to 1. Otherwise, beta is equal to 0. So, first of all, let's consider the true uh, distribution of beta. Now, if we knew that the probabilities of becoming uh, president for the representative of the white party, uh, blue party, or red party are correspondingly P W P beta and P R, and we don't know these probabilities. We are evaluating these probabilities, right? So these are our evaluations. So the, if this is, is a true probability, then I can say that the probability of W uh, of beta to be equal to one is equal to probability of beta is equal to one equals to P W. Now. Obviously, this is a mathematical expectation, which is also PW. And as far as the variance is concerned, as we know, i calculated many times, it's PW times 1 minus PW. Now, I also mentioned that this particular expression is less than or equal to one quarter if PW is a probability, which means it's between zero and one. So this is just a regular um, quadratic polynomial and um, uh, in the segment from zero to one, one quarter is its maximum when PW is equal to one half actually. Remember the parabola, it goes this way. So I can use this to evaluate the, var uh, the variance of beta. 
even if PW is unknown to me, I can use the maximum which PW can take as a variation, and that actually signifies certain uh, precision of my evaluation of the probabilities, right? Now, since I'm talking about 4,000 di 4, different people, each one of them is voting with this probability for the representative of the, of the white party. If I will take the average of those guys, so I have 4,000 identically, uh, identically distributed uh, random variables, which have exactly the same distribution as my beta, which I have defined for one particular person, and I am averaging them, right? Now, what is this? This is actually one experiment which gave me 14,080, right? Divided by 4,000. So, this is my 0 0.37 evaluation, because 14, 1480 of these are ones, right? And the rest are zeros. So, basically, this is a random variable which I basically made an experiment once and got the value 0 0.37. It's a new variable, if you wish. Now, what is the expectation of this variable? Obviously, it's the same as expectation of this, right? Because expectation is added together, and these are all the same, so it's 4,000 of them divided by 4,000, still the same. But the variance of this is obviously less. The variance of eta is uh, pw times 1 minus pw divided by 4,000. Remember that the average of identically distributed independent variables is, you have to actually, you have to factor out this in square, and then there are 4,000 of them, so that would be the result, which obviously is smaller than 1 over water times 1,000. So, that's how I evaluate the variance of this. That's actually a very big deal. Because it allows me to evaluate the margin of error of this particular um, estimate which I made. Now, here is how. Since I know the variance, since I know the variance, I obviously know um, standard deviation. It's less than or equal to uh, 1, 2, square root of 4,000, right? Because standard deviation is the square root of this. So I'm evaluating square uh, standard deviation. Now, if I would like to do my evaluation with 95% certainty, which is kind of standard, this is actually an interval which is equal to 2 sigma from the, uh, from the midpoint, right? Midpoint is this one. And two sigma is one over uh, square root of four thousand, which is approximately I have it somewhere uh, zero point zero one fifty eight. So that's my margin of error for this particular number. Now, what does it mean? It means that the real probability is with 95% uh, certainty is from 0 0.37 minus this to 0 0.37 plus this number, which is 0 0.3542, right? Right to 0 
0.0858. That's my margin of, well, that's my interval uh, considering the margin of error. So with 95% certainty, I can say that the probability of the representative of the white party to become the president is this. Okay, now, let's talk about other two parties. If I will do the same kind of logic with uh, representatives of the blue party, now, obviously, this thing is exactly the same. Because we are not really depending on anything but the number of uh, people in this uh, survey, which is 4,000. So this value is just based on the number, which means my margin of error will be exactly the same for the blue party representative. Uh, uh, and, and we are talking about evaluating uh, his chances to become the president. Same thing with this guy. So let me just put it down. So the probability of the blue guy, the blue party representative is 0 0.33 minus this, which is 0 0.3142, and plus would be 0 0.3458. And the same thing for the red party, which is minus would be 0 0.2842, and plus would be 0 0.3158. Eight. So that's the result of my calculations based on crude evaluation of the precision, crude evaluation of the variance of all my random variables which I'm talking about, and that's the um, intervals where with 95% probability our um, probabilities belong to. Now, is it sufficient to predict the results of the election? Not exactly, because look, this interval is definitely above everything else. So even the maximum of this is, small, is, is still smaller than the minimum of this interval. This is 34.58, this is 35.42. Which means that the probability with 95% certainty, I can say that the white party will become the president. Now, how about Vice President and uh, Minister of Defense? Now, we know that the Vice President position should be awarded to the guy who will be the second, right? But now, you see, this interval and this interval, they are intersecting. The smaller is 3142, and the bigger one is 3158, which is bigger. So, intervals overlapping which means we cannot differentiate between them, between these two probabilities, with 95% certainty. That's what's very important. So, whatever we have done is sufficient for prediction of who is the, the president with 95% certainty. But it's not sufficient to predict who will be vice president and who will be the defense minister. Now, if I will use exactly the same methodology for um, more precise evaluation, I need numbers to be greater. So 4,000 is not, is not enough, because 4,000 gives me only this precision. And this precision is too, uh, rude to, too, too crude to uh, differentiate between th these two guys. Now, if I will get more people surveyed, and let's just assume for a second that the proportions will be the same, which not necessarily the fact, but let's just assume that if I will um, uh, ask more people the same question about who is your preferred candidate, I will have the same probabilities. Now, I will have to have the difference between these two to be greater than here. This is 0 0.30 and this is 0 0.33. I would like interval to be here, which means 
double margin of error should be smaller than the distance between these two things. So this is not good because the distance between these two is 0 0.03, right? But the double of this is greater. It's 0 0.316, whatever, right? Now, I need it to be smaller. So I need the 1 over square root of n. n is the number of my uh, number of people w which I have surveyed. Should be... Uh, smaller than half of this distance, right? Or I can put this, two. Two margins of arrows should be smaller than distance between these two. So that's what my condition. Now, from this, I can derive what is n supposed to be. And if you will square this and, uh, and, and, and invert, you will get n greater than 4,444, something like this. I did it once. So, 4,000 is not sufficient to differentiate in case you have such difference between the probability, between empirical frequencies. But with the same empirical frequencies, 4,444 um, people um, would be sufficient because then uh, you will definitely differentiate between the first and the second place. Then you can say that, thi th th that this is definitely with 95% certainty greater than this. Because without this number of people, with only this number of people, 4,000, you cannot say that 0 0.33 with 95% uh, certainty gives you better chances than for this guy. Okay. This was based on a very crude evaluation of my variance, based on just the number of um, experiments, number of people which we have surveyed. Now, there is a better way. Now, we were talking about sample variance, which is slightly better than this um, maximum which I have just used. And let's do this same calculations based on sample variance because that's how practical people actually do in cases like this. Now, what's good and what's bad about sample variance? Well, the good is that it gives you a little bit better precision of the variance. The bad thing about sample variance is that it introduces certain additional element of uncertainty however small it is. So, let's do that. So, instead of calculating um, for this variable beta that its variance just less than or equal to one quarter, I would like to evaluate it better. Now, how can I do it? Well, to better evaluate this particular um, variance, I will use the sample variance, which means Sample variance is uh, the... What, what is variance? Variance is average of square of deviation, right? So let's just do this uh, average of square of deviations. We will use the following thing. Um, this particular variable, if you remember, we had four white, blue, and, uh, and red these statistics out of 4,000, right? These are preferable numbers. So, this variable, random variable beta, which is equal to 1 if the person uh, chose the white party candidate and uh, 0 otherwise. So, in 4, 1,480 cases, my variable beta took value of 1 and its deviation from uh, its um, empirical frequency square is this and the rest out of 4000 the rest is what 
20, 5, 20. It took value 0. And if you remember, I have to divide it not by 4,000, but 3,999 3, to make this evaluation of my variance unbiased. Again, if somebody doesn't remember where I got 3,999, just go to a previous lecture where I'm talking about um, uh, this sample variance. And I have the value of this, I guess, somewhere, which is 0.2331. Now, is it better than this? Yes, it is. This is 0 0.25. This is 0 0.2331, which is slightly less. So, what I can say is that sample variance, in this particular case at least, um, although it does give you a little bit more precise evaluation of variance, which means your interval where your real probability will be around its um, uh, empirical frequency would be narrower, which is good because it, this, it, it allows you to, to distinguish different probabilities for different parties a little bit more precisely. So maybe this is even sufficient to differentiate between three um, candidates because this crude evaluation was not sufficient to distinguish between the vice president and the defense minister, right? Between blue and, and, and red. Maybe this one will be. All right, so what I can say is that this 0 0.37 um, can use this particular variance and that's a little bit better than this. Now, this is the variance of beta, right? Now, we are talking about beta 1 plus etc. plus beta 4000 divided by 4000, right? This is the average uh, of 4000 different random variables, each for uh, individual who was surveyed, which means my variance of this, so variance of the estimate, so if this divided by 4000 is 0 0.37, right? So this is my um, empirical frequency, so the variance of this would be 0 0.2331 divided by 4000, okay? And from this, I can extract square root, and it will be my standard deviation, sigma, and 2 sigma, which I need for 95% um, margin of error, 95% certainty that my mar margin of error is good, would be in this particular case 0 0.0153. Okay, it's a little bit better than before, before I get 0 0.158 for all three different candidates. Now, for the first candidate, I've got this margin, which makes me thinking that I have a slightly narrower real interval where I can evaluate my probability. So, my PW would be from 0 0.37 minus this, it's 35.47, right? Okay, I didn't write it down. And 0 0.3853. Okay, got that. Now, if you remember with the crude methodology, I didn't really have to calculate separately the probabilities and margins of error for these two guys. Now I have to, because I have to take into consideration exact statistics which happened to evaluate my variance. So exactly the same evaluation of 2 sigma for blue gives me 
0 0.049 149 and evaluation for the red guy would give me 0 0.0145 so I have different numbers as you see for different people right now because it's not only dependent on as I said not only from dependent on the number of people we survey, survey but also on exact statistics which allows us to say that the for blue party to become the president the probability is this is 0 0.33 and 0 0.30 if you divide by 4000 so that would be from 0 0.3 33 minus this so it's 33 5 1 and 34, 4, 9. And for the probability of the red party candidate to become the president is 0 0.28, uh, 55, 0 0.30 minus this, and 0 0.3145. And now, look what's important now the maximum of this guy is less than the minimum of this guy oh sorry yeah that's something like this no 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 no. wait a moment i'm wrong here 33 minus so 31 yes right now that's right so um which means that these intervals are not intersecting anymore they're not overlapping which means that with this more precision which we are allowing ourselves by replacing the crude methodology of evaluating variance with a more precise evaluation based on uh, sample variance calculation so sample variance calculation is a little more a little bit more precise and it gives now intervals non-intersecting which means that with 95 percent probability or certainty rather I can say that it's the blue guy who will be the vice president and the red guy will be the defense minister. So, the purpose of all these calculations, etc., is just to show how to use the real values, the real uh, results to evaluate unknown probabilities of certain things. And we are talking about um, task A of statistical distribution when you know that uh, there are certain predefined results of experiment and you just don't know the probabilities this, uh, these results will, will be obtained by random experiments all right? so in this particular case that's how it's all done and, um, and the results depend actually very very strongly depend on the number of experiments which we are doing so as you see in this particular case um, of well relatively close distribution among uh, different participants uh, you need a, lo a lot of uh, people to survey to uh, make your evaluation significantly precise to differentiate between different positions for instance like in this particular case well that was my uh, first problem and that's related to this task A now I will probably spend some time for analogous problems in some other cases like for instance when you don't know the exact values our random variable can take um, or maybe uh, that's in a discrete case and then there are some continuous cases where also you have certain results uh, either bounded or unbounded etc but in all these cases we have certain preliminary assumptions and preliminary calculations which will eventually fall into the same task A algorithm so it's very important to understand how all these manipulations are done in this particular case because all other three cases which I have tasks B, C and D um, will basically follow the same logic and I will spend much less amount of time to present them now I do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture again and what will be even great, uh, greater even than just to read my notes 
if you can just forget about whatever you saw on the screen right now uh, try to do the same calculations yourself and if you will come up with certain um, you know certain the same numbers will be would be great, would be great. Uh, if you don't think about who made the mistake maybe I made a mistake all right that's it for today thank you very much and good luck